Hey guys, welcome to TKMR Gaming. I'm Dran and uh, I'm joined by as far as Bex and uh, Magatsu. It Yay. is a tw yeah. it is the 26th of July 2015 and we're playing some more uh, Star Wars, the Saga edition. Yay. So last time we left off, um, I don't remember what you were doing, but uh, we, were we spent to... like eight years inside this room here. Yeah. Right, <laughs> so you got out of that room All right, and yeah, you pretty much mapped out the entire rest of the dungeon. Um, yes. There's really, you didn't really find anything else of interest, and given that you remember walking by this huge gaping chasm, seemingly in the middle of nowhere, you decide to head back over there to see if you can get, get your way across. You remember that in your inventory you got this um, liquid rope container that is a 15 meters long. Unfortunately, the chasm is about 50 feet across, and so it's just uh, a couple inches short of reaching the other side. Uh, you've noticed that the top of the ceiling, the rocks are jagged, um, unpolished. It looks um, kind of crudely cut out to make the room that you're in and as such it would be hard to get any sort of stable um, connection if you wanted to try to repel yourself across. Did you say 15 or 50? 50 feet across. Okay. The 50 feet across your rope is 15 meters. Okay, right, okay. What is on the other side again? So the other side, there's like a small, this green thing right here. That yeah, that's a, the is door, a right? door, and you see um, a small amount of light coming underneath through the cracks of the door. The light appears to be kind of a faint, soft yellow color. Uh, it is not flickering, so you assume it's some kind of electrical light as opposed to like a candle or something. Okay, uh, is there any, if I peer down into the chasm, are there any like other entrances further down? The chasm, as you look into it, is virtually pitch black except for the one glow rod that you dropped down there, which has now kind of faded off. Okay, I need to buy a torch. <laughs> Wait, don't we have some kind of, uh, um, what did we get again? Um... <sighs> Some of those fuse lanterns or something yeah, like that. Yeah, something like that. You have Maybe lanterns, yeah. Oh, yeah. I think all three of you have fusion lanterns, yeah. Uh, they still work, right? They still work. However, the lanterns are more of a. They emit light in like a, a radial fashion as opposed to a directed beam. Right. So uh -huh. it doesn't go reach down there. So you can see a little bit down there, but it's still kind of dark. It's not like a flashlight. Okay, if I start wandering around from, let's say, this place, uh -huh. all the way up to there, mm -hmm. and I like look at like the leads, uh -huh. do I see anything like different from where we're standing like, right now? I, I would assume them. As you walk um, all up and the down same. the ledge on your side, you look down. And you notice that um, you don't see any sort of step bars or ladders or anything going down, but the side of the wall is is perfectly smooth and, and flush with uh, the ledge that you're standing on. Um, you, you estimate that whoever made this chasm, uh, or rather, you estimate that this chasm was man-made rather than a natural hole, and that um, there was a lot of effort and time in to make whatever it is that's inside. Do I see uh, like a little ledge on the side of this wall over here? Or you see no ledges side? whatsoever, no. I believe we asked that last time as well. Oh, did yeah. we? I don't remember. It's been two weeks. <laughs> it has been a while. Uh, is there like do I see like a control panel of some kind over? That's a good one. On okay. the other side, give yeah. me a perception check. Can we all roll? You can all roll. AC roll shit. 
21. 26. Whoa. Whoa. 28. Oh. Holy crap. <laughs> All three of you guys see um, about two meters left of the door on the opposite side. Not a control panel, but something odd on the ground. Um, it looks like, yeah, like about here. Okay. Not against the wall. It appears to be some kind of square panel. It has a slightly reflective property. Um, Tomax, as you kind of peer into it to try to strain your eyes and get a look at it, you're able to see that it actually looks, from what you can remember, identical to the panels, the little grids that you saw underneath the four statues um, oh, okay. of the Jedi Knights. Do we only see one? You only see one. And is there? No, we can't see that. I guess a logo on it. See, can we see? You can't there? see any sort of logo as far as you can tell. Uh, what if we look up to the ceiling on this spot? Do we notice anything on the ceiling? You look right up to the it. ceiling directly above the panel, and you don't see anything. <laughs> it appears to be just normal jagged ceiling that's consistent with the rest of the entire ceiling. Might be a stupid question, but on our own side, do we see anything like that? There are no panels on your side. And the ceiling, when you say it's jagged, are there uh, stalactites hanging down, or is it just kind of... Uh, just kind of like... Rock. Rough, crudely carved out room. Okay. Are they... Can, could we break them? Uh, with like a force power? Break are they what? breakable? The rock? Yeah, yeah, like a piece of, of the rock from the roof. Um, yeah, so you could try. Is that gonna call it the cave in? <laughs> yeah, I was just about to no, say. I, I was just thinking <laughs> Sounds that like a bad idea. <laughs> what, if it, what if it's a pressure plate? Maybe we just need something on it. Well, it's not Terraria. <laughs> oh, no, I know, but I mean. Star Wars. And I mean, I've, I've seen Yoda or uh, the other guy. I pull a rock out of the rock, I guess, out of the wall. Okay, well, you're the two Jedi, you're fairly confident you can loosen up one of the rocks uh, even from the jagged ceiling. It doesn't even have to be like, heavy enough, I guess. Yeah. Maybe. You're fairly confident you can do it. Yeah, when you say rock, do you mean like a pebble or do you mean boulder? Oh, it, it, uh, well, not a boulder either. Uh, in between... But then again, in between a pebble is like nothing, and a rock is like <laughs> too massive. Yeah, I mean, a rock is a very, I guess, nebulous term. Yeah, I guess, I guess, like maybe, depending on how big this little uh, plateau is, I guess, like maybe a rock that you have to hold with two hands at least. Yes. The platform uh, again, like I said, ma uh, matches the size of the ones in front of the. Right. All the four Jedi Knight statues. It's you could probably squeeze about two people on one platform. All right, so uh, a heavy enough rock that you have to carry with two hands to do the trick to press a plate at least. I would. Assume. Well, I could pick up the droid. What's <laughs> powered over there? Well, I've, it I've, I've, I thought I about mean, that actually. The, the but... trouble there is you have to roll a fifteen to do it. Yeah, which is gonna be easy, but. What how what is your roll? Uh, twenty plus seven. Okay, so in order to do it, you would need fifteen minus seven, so you would need eight. Exactly. On a one d twenty. Hmm. Well, if he messes but then up, again, you fall into a pit. No, no, no. I I, no, I, I die if he messes no, up. Hold on, no, I don't think it works <laughs> like that. I mean, I probably have to roll first, to be able to pick you up. So. Well, I mean, if you get close enough... If I enough, fill roll, I'm not even going to pick you I, up. If you get like a 12 or something, then you probably push me back into the chasm, but I don't make it all the way across. That's that's probably how it works, I guess. Uh, mine, is, um, mine is a no, plus, eight. plus 8. So yeah. if you attempt this roll, you're going to push him over the chasm. Now it's whether he gets across or not. It's yeah. not that if you fail the roll, he just sits there. So he's going to be flying well, over. Move objects, right. Not a push. Well, right. right. But it's going to initiate a move on. Right. Ten. I mean, w what happens if you don't get fifteen? What happens if you roll DC ten? That's a small object. 
There's no small object. Or like, what happens if you don't make 15 moves below that? That's the lowest one, I think. Okay. Come on, man. You know this. It's do or do not. There's no try, man. It's the force. Yeah. The size matters not. You know what I'm saying? You're not the one whose very life is at stake. Is being discussed. Hey, I'm just quoting the movies, man. Quick question before we before that though. Do I still have those gems in my storage unit? Yes. I can't remember if I kept those or not. Wait, which gems? Uh, the ones that were in the box that we found when we you killed the You have the, the three of those things? Yeah. Yes, you still have those. Okay. Just wanted to make sure, because I forgot what happened to them. Um, so yeah, about this chasm. I mean... What if we combine our collective force powers to do it? Yeah, or I could use a force point if you want, but I'm, I'm pretty sure I can... Up you over. I mean, that may, uh, my worry though is that you'll die. One, <laughs> one that I'll die and end up like flat as a pancake, and two that you guys won't be able to get down there to recover me. So move object it moves up to six squares, and if we use the like D and D square thingy, fifth, that'll get you feet. thirty feet. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, so so it'll take the two of you to like chain force move. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> Well, can we not do do it at the same time? And, and you could do it at the same time, but it would just be a really strong move, thirty feet. Right. Bringing down uh, a star destroyer requires less effort. Yeah, that's oh. it. <laughs> I think we should just do it, just to see <laughs> what this thing is. Can we can we can we get him back the same way? Uh, yeah. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah probably. Okay, well, I think we should do it. That's two rolls. I'm gonna leave it up to Dran. His character. Well, I mean... We both have plus seven. I think I think John even has plus eight, so... I have plus eight. Okay, that means... You both need to roll a seven and an eight. I don't think we've ever missed a use to force check. I have. Did? Oh, I don't think I've ever <laughs> did. Yeah, I hit like ten in a row, or like four in a row, then I miss like two in a row going against that, uh... This is Dran right now. <laughs> That's pretty good. I have a bad feeling about this. I've got a bad feeling about this. <laughs> oh, I have a bad or we feeling about sleep. this. And so on. <laughs> I don't want to watch the whole thing in case we get flagged, but yeah. Feeling. So every character has said it at least once? Yeah, I think that was a running gag in uh... Really? Nice. <laughs> awesome. So that's what Dren is saying right now, and <laughs> yeah. I say we should do it anyway. <laughs> well, I think... We're not gonna miss. The odds are so... certainly in my favor, but at the same time, failure will result in my, my death. Right. Um, so, hold on. So I'm if naturally worried. It... If we use a force button, do we have to use it after or before? Uh, before, before, I think. Before. I'm willing to use a force button, just f even though what? I know I'm going to make it. What do you get with a... 1d6 extra? Oh, okay, so that may... That would make it almost, like, guaranteed, I guess. It would be a waste, but... Sure. It's not a waste. Force points, man. We got so many. Who cares, man? Uh, <laughs> well, we might need them. <laughs> Just go rest and get another one, man. That's <laughs> Just I mean, yeah, tea ceremony. I, mean, I don't care. Tea ceremony. I mean, all of this. I would just want to see what what says on the plate. I mean, just in case we need to go back to the room. Well, here's another thing. If we do send him over there, he's over there by himself. And have yeah. Wait, we have yeah. calm, so we can leave him there, and we just go back to the room, and then <laughs> he can uh, we can talk to him or somehow. I don't know, you know. What? I'm just saying. If we put him over there, we are splitting the party. Technically, yeah. Um, uh, well, because yeah, you got I any mean, other ideas? it's a good point because once I'm over there, what can I actually do? Uh, check the plateau out. Open the freaking door. No, but you make know, like, sure there's a bridge. Yeah, but there's a door over there. I thought the whole point was to open a door. He yeah, can, the point is yeah, to get to the door. He can step on the plate. Maybe it will. Maybe it was no, I think. <laughs> or maybe it's just a piece uh, of rock. 
Now I think this plateau, or at least something connected to the statue room, is gonna give us a bridge. You think so? Yeah, I, I, I kind of think so. But I could be wrong. I mean, I'm, well, I'm I mean, not the smartest guy here. So. You looked over those statues and the. Um... I only looked over one statue, one plateau, as far as I remember. So <laughs> what you remember of that four statue room is that there are four Jedi Knights in various. Um, battle poses. Look, yeah, battle poses right. with a platform underneath that is identical to the platform that you see across the chasm in front of you. Other than the fact that we can see a logo on it. Uh, right. From your angle, say... you can't tell if there is a logo or not. Right, yeah. There might be a logo. We know that from the platters in the room, there's a Jedi Knight logo on it, I there think. There is a Jedi Knight. Yeah. Old one. Old but... version. Hey, can I try to push it with the Force? Push the platform, the platform, the little plate. Yeah. Yes, you can. I want to try to push. If it's a pressure plate, I want to try to push it with the force. Okay. To depress it, as it were. You focus oh, nice. um, I you and that. channel your force <laughs> energy, <terrible. laughs> and uh, you concentrate your power as much as you can to push the pressure plate. Uh, to push the plate down. Uh, you see the plate shake a little bit, um, but after that, not, nothing happens. You confirm that it is not a pressure plate, as <laughs> it seems to be pretty solid into the ground. But we see it shake. Well, I mean, you try to push anything that's like firmly in place, it'll shake. Well... Look at that roll. I can shake anything with that roll. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Yeah, you got a twenty on that. That's very impressive. Okay. I mean, you looked at the ones in the Jedi room, the statue room before, and you didn't find Only anything. One. I I looked at his one, this one, fans one, if I remember correctly. Right. I don't think I checked out the others. At least the way I checked out fans one. Did we go back to the room and have another <laughs> look? I'm I mean, still okay, we're just leaving. Come on, they're definitely connected. <laughs> I'm not leaving this place. Not gonna happen. Well, we were here for a reason. I forget what it exactly. was, but uh, <laughs> uh, we, uh information. Um, the two Jedi knights at this moment um fall to their knees and feel a strong bout of nausea. Oh, uh, you, you yeah. sense a strong uh wave of the dark side come over you. You know. You know that this likely means that there was a strong Sith user nearby. And we send from which Dude, direction? Out direction, man. <laughs> you can't tell from what direction. Can I roll perception to tell what direction? Um, okay. Should I uh, use separate force? You what can't tell that? what direction. You can tell, though, it's pretty far away. Dude, we should get out of here. I think that's a blow. Oh, we should go we deeper in. <laughs> We're sent to observe, not to fight. We've already fought once. Now we fought creatures, not anything Sith. Well, those were Sith, weren't they? Well, they were Sith creatures, but... Well, we're not strong... <laughs> well, we're not strong in the Force, but we felt this guy. We know he's strong in the Force. Oh, he knows already that we're here. Yeah, that's why we should leave. But you don't know where, from whence this feeling came. Uh oh. So, you could be running straight into him. Oh yeah. He could be at the entrance. Okay. No, it's far away. Yeah, we he could be at the entrance. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That entrance, I say. Yeah. I say. Well, there's so many entrances here. So. Well, there's only one. I say we leave. There's only this one here. Ah, uh, depends how you look at it. Well, all the paths lead back to that point. Yeah, I say we leave. No, it's too late to leave. Because <laughs> <laughs> what, what kind of he's already in. So? That mean we can't leave. Oh, he knows we're here. Well, the, so? the, way, the way I see it, there's, there's two possibilities. He's either here at the entrance, or somewhere else in the... Uh, uh, in the area we've already been behind us, or he's like deeper in beyond this door here. He might have been yeah, here the whole depends. time, he just didn't know we were here until I used the force right then, and he was like, hey, I sense you. Maybe. 
and he was feeling out where we were. Either way, um, we know that there's a force user here, so hey, that's plenty of information. It's time to go. Hmm, okay. All right, so I'm, I'm leaving. Uh, yeah. So. <laughs> can I can I roll perception to see if my droid um, sensors would pick up anything, like any sounds sure. of movement from inside sure. the cave? Come on, high roll. That's a pretty high roll. Almost wow, a crit. Wow, you guys are <laughs> amazing rolls. All right, so you have various biometric sensors on board your system. Um, you are 100% confident that there are no living life forms in this cave except for the two Jedi Knight with you. Okay. Um, okay, I relay that information to uh, to the other two. Go away. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I should have never given him that bug. <laughs> It's crazy, that box is the best thing to happen so far. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, there you have it. There's no Sith in here. That's just dark energy, which makes really sense. That was weird English, but I don't care. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> yeah. He says we should go away. You know, I think this robot's really smart. <laughs> no, we Greetings. need to get over this gap. We need to know what's behind that door. Why don't you jump it, then? <laughs> can't jump it. Don't you got four surge or something? No, you do. I don't. Could he jump it? No, I don't think you can. I think it's too far, probably. I don't know. Maybe if I spend a force point or a destiny point. That's how many. <laughs> Waste your destiny point trying to get across here. <laughs> I don't care what's on the other side of the door. So. Yeah. Uh, well, you shoot. Why? Because that's our mission. No, our mission was to observe. No, and our mission leave. was to get information. Hey, we've got the information. We know we the don't have anything. Here. There's no we force know. user here. Did, did just, you just uh, hear uh, the droid? Uh, we know there's an evil force user on this planet. So that's more than enough information. If they wanted more, they should have sent better Jedi. <laughs> <laughs> it's that self-deprecating Jedi here. I have no words for that. I'm not gonna leave. I'm going actually back to this room. I don't care. Wait, you're going back to where? Why don't you go yeah, ahead and call me Brian across that pit, man? You got it. Nope. Kobe. <laughs> so what's going on? So um, Mike's going to the room for Solari. Ellis, I assume you're following. Yes. Tomax, what are you doing? I guess I'll go back to the room because I'm not splitting the party with the evil force user about the bus to <laughs> jump out. Jump out, be like, ha ha ha, you're at level two and kill me. <laughs> um, so the three of you walk into the room, and nothing has changed since the last time you were here. You see the four statues in the center, they are facing each other. Um, they seem to be aligned with the center of the room. Um, what is in the center of the room? Nothing. Anything specific? Nothing. Uh, I'm going to try all statues, see if any of them is movable. Movable? Uh, yeah, okay. Did you try that before? Yeah, you've definitely no, tried the statues before. One, one statue. You go from statue to statue to use your physical strength as much as you can to try to shove. None of them bulge uh, or budge. Uh, they seem very solidly connected to the ground. What if I check all four plates? Do I see any scratch marks at all? Uh, you look at all four plates time. very closely. Only there, are, there are no scratch plates. All right, I want to pull up my lightsaber and strike a pose with one of the guys. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Which one do you want to strike a pose with? Uh, I don't know. What are the poses? Which one is the most baller pose? <laughs> <laughs> Hero um, pose. I have written them down. I've written them down actually. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I gotta scroll back a lot actually. Uh, do, let's see. Do you want me to take a picture as you do so? <laughs> oh. Post it on well, Instagram. You're definitely. Are you recording the whole thing? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah well, I, I, want, I, want a, I want a special screenshot. <laughs> Post it on my Facebook. Just chilling out at Korriban. 
Yeah. Okay, so Fent is about to draw his lightsaber. Okay, that's not bother enough. Uh, Mice. One was so casting Force Lightning, wasn't forward. it? Looks like he's using the Force, trying to deflect the Force spell. Yeah. Uh, press his pose, wielding a du dual lightsaber, looks to be in a defense pose, and real pose is shielding himself from something. Okay, I want to be the guy deflecting with the Force power, yeah. Do you have nice. <laughs> okay, are you, yeah. actually, you actually should stand on the plateau doing the same thing he does, I think. <laughs> Wait, what? I want to stand right next to him so I get him a good photo for the... Uh... <laughs> photo up. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> you stand next to the statue and you do you do the same exact pose? Yep. Which one is he doing? I don't the know. The defensive uh, double-sided lightsaber. The... Oh, the price? No, the oh. one where he's deflecting something with the... With force or he's using his hands to deflect something. Yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> so uh, you. So, mice. so yeah. So you stand next to the statue and you make a pose mice. as if you're deflecting something. Um, Which Alex, one is looking at mice? Real. 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 They're going okay. across from each other. All right. Right. Um, right. So he, you stand next to mice. You do the same pose. Ellis takes a picture. <laughs> At this moment, you feel the earth start to shake. The ground starts to shake. You see pebbles and dirt come uh, falling from the ground. The room gets really dusty. Everything um, starts to vibrate. And it becomes unsteady. You lose your balance. Um, the statues, however, remain intact, but the whole room just, it's like a real big, some kind of like shock that hit the ground. Um, Did we all feel that, or just him? Everyone felt it. Everyone, everyone felt it. Everyone's off their guard. My pose is so strong. You guys do not understand. <laughs> so, was, I, w I just want to know, was he standing on the plateau doing this? He was not standing on the on the platform. Okay, what if I do real pose, but I stand on the plateau? You stand on it. You do his pose. Nothing happens. Yeah, I'm pretty Your sure. Your pose isn't real enough, man. Your pose isn't real enough. Why don't you stand on the po uh, plateau and do the same thing? Yeah. I want. Which one are you doing? You're doing the one opposite me, right? Yeah. I, I'm pretty sure in this scenario you're mistaking uh, correlation for, um, for causation. Ooh, I don't even know what that means. Very nice. <laughs> he means that just because I strike the pose and something happened doesn't mean what I did made what happened happen. Yeah. I don't know Steve, if I explained bro. that well enough. I don't know if yeah, I explained I it well but enough. But it doesn't matter, but these guys don't have these... I just didn't give us the poses for nothing. So there's something we have to do with this shit. Alright, I think let's strike the other poses then. I think it's just to um, to show that two of these guys turn to the dark side. And we can see which those uh, two but are because one? they're the ones attacking the, uh, the other ones. No, let's do the other poses. I'm gonna go over to Vance's I mean, part and do his pose. Okay, hold on. Hold on a sec. So, mice... Is posing a single arm forward. Looks like he's using the force to try to deflect. So that means real is attacking him. Real is doing. No, but no, real no. Is real also shielding himself. No, something. I'm pretty sure Mize and um, Vant were the ones who turned to the dark side, right? Or the ones who the left hell? the order. That you know that from the all three of you know that from your lore. You don't Two of the four have rumors that they are turned to the dark side. I cannot remember which. Guessing Ice and Fend. Yeah, I'm guessing the ones down. that are actually attacking rather than defending. But Prize and Real, you don't know much about the two, so they may have turned, but you're not sure. Um, but all you Prize. know is that they were at least Jedi Knights, like the other two. Alright, I'm going over to Vance, and I'm going to do that... Uh... Yeah, I'm gonna go over to Mice and do the same pose. That's the pose I was doing, <laughs> wasn't it? I know, but yes, we probably have to do it at the same time, maybe. <laughs> so the two of you stand over the other platforms and... I mean, maybe, I don't know, I'm just You guessing. do a pose. When you do the pose, nothing happens. <laughs> um, but you sense that by standing on the plates, there is some... Some inkling of the force uh, going through you. There's some connection that you have with the plate. Does it feel good or bad? 
it feels neutral but it calls to you it wants you to call to it can i meditate on the plate okay that no that is definitely dark side <laughs> <laughs> it wants you to call to it that's like that's the most evil thing that's been said this entire session so far oh that's still a the session <laughs> it is, but... We're in an evil temple, dude. Come on, everything is evil. Yeah, pretty much. Um, so you meditate on the temple, uh, on the uh, plate. Uh, give me... Give me a use of force. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> what, it, what was that about you never fail use the force? <laughs> <laughs> I give up. <laughs> so you you sit down. Are you sitting on you're sitting I on mines, right? I think. Uh, yeah, I guess. Okay. So That's you sit. Standing, so. so you sit on mines and yeah. on on the little platform in front of mines, and right. you meditate, and you see images. You see various images that don't make sense. They come in and out of order. They flash in, flash out. Um, and one of them is you see a, a picture of some kind of demonic creature. It makes you sick to your stomach. It um, it scares you, and it makes you question: Am I on the right side of the force? Perhaps the dark side is the right side. Okay. Uh, is, does that creature look like the creature we fought? The, the no. Ones? Okay. It looks like um, it looks like you can't really tell, but you see that it has a mouth. It's definitely drooling with some sort of foaming, like some kind of rabid dog. But it has a lot of rancor. legs and appendages. It's not as big as a rancor. Um, it's probably the size of a tauntaun. Okay. But with many, it's pretty many big, legs. actually. Can I cut it open and comment <laughs> forward? You could. It might smell. Uh, I'm actually gonna relay this to Tomex. Oh yeah, you know what? We should leave. <laughs> so, wow. like a good what, what kind of pushy Jedi are you, bro? I've expected more from you, seriously. I'm hey, well. I'm I'm an apprentice. What I don't. People say, "Hey, go look at that thing over there." I don't go over there and then start messing with it. I look and I'm like, "Oh, then I leave." Yeah. We're here for a reason. We we, whatever. I don't even know. Are the two of you still standing? On no, the I'm plate? gonna. Can I try to actually meditate on like press? Okay, sure. Press on plate. price. Okay. Price. Oh, price. Okay. Guess I need to do use force again. Yes. There we go. There we go. So when you meditate, um, he should be a light side guy then. I think right. Correct. If yeah, my theory is correct, yeah. Yeah. When you meditate, you you hear a voice, and at the same time, Tomax, you also hear a voice. Oh shit! And it's it's a soft voice that says, "Release." <laughs> well, fuck that. Okay, I, I take it back. That's the most evil thing I've heard of this session. So <laughs> <laughs> I don't know though. Did it sound? Is it, does it sound uh, menacing or? Yeah, uh, tortured. Uh, you can't tell. It was a brief second. Is that it, seriously? Is that the only thing I heard with twenty-two? Yeah, it sounds like no images. Uh, no images. Um, you know the um, the I scene from Independence Day where they're in the Area 51 oh, yeah. Yeah, and yeah, it's yeah. like the monster taking care of, got the scientist by the throat and he says, right. like, release me. It's like that yeah. kind of voice. Can I sense any Thanks. malice or dark side of the force coming from the... All four of them. Well, <laughs> the whole area is that dark force. Yeah. Like, exuding out of it. So... It, Nothing over the background level of Dark Force that you already feel. Seriously, we should leave. <laughs> <laughs> the All of a sudden, um, you guys notice the that strong sense of the dark side from the Sith is now gone.
You probably stole our ship. See, I hope you're happy. Stole our ship, <laughs> and now we're stuck here. Uh, well, I hope they did then. I'm pretty sure the Ewok's guarding it. Yeah. Or he's taking yeah. it. Yeah. Or he stole it. Or he stole it. Oh yeah, that's a that's a possibility. Is that his destiny? It might be. <laughs> <laughs> it would be in line with him. <laughs> the two Jedi, you hear the same voice again, and it says, "Release me." Well, oh wait, without me meditating, we actually hear that. Yes. Is the Can droid we... here too. The droid does not hear. It. We pinpoint where it kind of came from, or it's it just... comes from inside your head. Right. Okay. I figured. It's never a good idea to listen to voices in your head. You don't understand how it is, droid. You don't, you know, <laughs> you only have one voice in what your head. What if I try to meditate on real? No. <laughs> <laughs> Can I do that? Uh, yeah. You meditate over, give me a use the force. Um, you it's see, bad today. You, you, you see a vision of pitch black. It's very soothing. And you hear this, you get the sensation of no sound. It's like you're locked up in one of those um, uh, sound rooms, the soundproof rooms that's completely black, so there's no sensory input whatsoever. It's just nothingness. Oh, wow. As if you're inside a black hole. Isn't that normally like what they do to torture people? Kind of, but not. Sensory in a, deprivation? This, it's not. Um, frightening, it's more relaxing. I see. I don't like how comfortable we're getting in this place. We should be totally <laughs> Can I, uh, just try to talk to this voice? Like, can I say how? Would, would it answer it back? Um, okay. So, you try to communicate with the voice. Um, I could meditate you, on it if you want. You hear a voice, um, Bar, only you hear the voice that says, Use the force. Obviously. <laughs> uh, can, can I ask him who he is? There, you get no response when you do that. All right, so you're ready to leave now? Let's go. <laughs> I wonder how I would need to use the force, I guess just maybe just meditating or... You gather that if you just concentrated on the plate and kind of channeled your force energy using... Uh, you wouldn't have to roll for it. You, if you just kind of channeled your energy into the plate, um, you could probably activate whatever he was doing or whatever he's asking you to do. How sure are we? Zero percent. Was on the good side. No. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it, in my text it says here uh, that we're guessing. Yeah. Ice and Fent would be. Yeah, he was that from. From rumors. He was a Jedi Knight. Uh, but the problem is, all four of them were Jedi Knights. Yes. Two of them, by rumors, would have gone to the dark side. Yeah. We are in a dark side temple. Why would you assume any of them were good? Uh, yeah, we're that, here that's right now, aren't we? like, for, all, for all we know, whatever presence it is that is speaking to you, it could be one of the dark side ones, or it could be one that has been corrupted to the dark side in the, uh, the intervening of centuries. Course. Although, if it was a dark side, or if it was a light side, it could be trapped here. It, it could, could be. be trapped here. Because if it was dark side, it wouldn't be trapped. It would be running around. Yeah, well, it's either two, two things. Shot. It's either tricked. It's either a trick. It's a trap. <laughs> or, or, or it's a, 
actually legit trapped here and it wants to be freed by us. Well, we don't know. I say we leave. That's really only but... one way to find out. Oh, <laughs> we just leave and not care. How about we fight him <laughs> if he's I... bad? Look, I got your back no matter what you do, but I still vote leaving. I say I'm getting weird, like Snake in the Garden of Eden vibes from this whole scenario. Um, you don't get dang. any vibes, Droid. <laughs> <laughs> you, should be like, you should be like logically we should leave because it doesn't make sense oh yeah obviously but I mean it's what What are you going to tell the Jedi Council when we get returned I'm going to tell them hey we heard some strange voices up in the evil <laughs> Sith temple so we decided to leave that's exactly what I'd say uh... tell them exactly what happened I was like man I was like fuck this let's get out of here and then we left and they can but be what? like, well, why don't you check? And I'd be like, okay, so, but what if it legit is someone that is trapped here? Well, then uh, they could send, like, a bunch of Jedi Knights to come free him. But we can do that. You hear the or voice even, again that's been speaking to the both of the, the two Jedi, here. and it's louder now. It says, release me. Shut up, man. We're having a conversation. <laughs> you know, uh, did well. it, did this time, did it sound more... Frightened or any emotion whatsoever? Boys? Um, it sounded oh, a little, a little annoyed, frantic. Like, frantic. A annoyed, little, like, a little yeah. annoyed. Are yeah. you, you stupid scrubs? Okay, well, fuck it. Uh, I tell Tomex to uh, draw your weapon, just in case. <laughs> I'm gonna right. meditate on the plateau and focus on trying to free him. Which one? Uh, Price. Okay. He's the one that uh, where it started, right? He's um. At least it, when I meditated. He's the one who had yeah. the voice. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Where that's where it happened. So do I roll a? Use no, you don't have to. You don't have to roll. Um. So you you go to the um, statue on the platform. You channel your mind to have the force flow within you to be one. Uh, with the area, one to connect with the panel. S sorry. Um, and then you um, concentrate as hard as you can. And for a brief instant, you you activate something. Something triggers. You're not sure what. But You're about this to become is, a statue, man. <laughs> it's only felt by um, Var and Tomax. And the, the two of you, um, you feel a sense of warmth engulf your body. It's like a flush sensation. The, both, the two of you break out in sweat. Um, and then the entire room fills with a blinding light. Ellis is able to see this as well. It is uncomfortable, yet soothing at the same time. It calls to you. You see a beam of, shooting, of light shooting through the air and then vanish into black emptiness. You suddenly feel an immense wave of sorrow, as if millions of voices cried out in terror <laughs> and were suddenly silenced. Again? Wait, did we die? No, you didn't die. You just Someone destroyed a planet, man. Awesome. You just destroyed a planet. Good job. Well, maybe I released them from <laughs> agony. Who knows? Do I feel this immense wave of sorrow as if millions of voices cried out in terror and were suddenly silenced? You don't feel the sorrow, you just hear the voices. Why do we see this thing though, then? When it's that's somewhere the, else? Where it's somewhere that's else? That's the beam that you, you see. Oh, alright. Um, can we go now? Um... <laughs> <laughs> about how you destroyed that planet <clears throat> yeah I mean you guys are the one who ate the forbidden fruit let's just let the record show that no one's gonna accuse you of anything droid don't worry <laughs> <laughs> you just be like, droids oh, don't take the blame for anything yeah you're like, you're like why'd you let your droid do that like, <laughs> I would have been a droid if they could use the force. 
What about the boys? Right, Where's he going? The boys, um, you hear a cackling? No, it's gotten. <laughs> It's, it's much softer now, and um, but it continues to say, release me. But now, it, for the two Jedi, it's very obvious that it's coming from Vant. Oh, shit. <laughs> Are you going to release you them? When you look at the statue, when you look at Vant, um, the two of you rub your eyes because you think you're hallucinating. You're not sure, but... You think that his face is looking at the two of you. Dude, we should totally leave. <laughs> Alice, you don't notice anything abnormal with the statue. It just looks like this. it's always been. Still scanning for targets. So what, are you going to release all the statues now? No, I was thinking about it. Because <laughs> you do Vant and then, <laughs> then you're going to hear it from real. And then, yeah, it's just going to go on. So the other two... I saw images, um, like real and mice, I saw images of stuff. So if I meditate on mice, I'm probably going to get some, some kind of a creature pop up. And real was emptiness, right? Like it was darkness. emptiness, yeah. Mm -hmm. And and him I didn't do yet, I don't think. No, you didn't do it yet. We already know Vant is the voice, right? Yeah, Vent is the voice apparently and Price is the bomb or whatever the hell it was. <clears throat> Fine, you want me to be the one to meditate on the ass when I was blasting? I don't know, I, uh, if you want to. I don't care. <laughs> I was planning on doing it anyway. I know. <laughs> so, right. so you can do it? Yeah. So Tomax, you walk over to Vant and you meditate yeah, over, ready. over the plate. Um, Ellis and Var, do you have your weapons drawn? Yes. Yes. Okay. You meditate um, over the plate and give me a use the force. Uh, when you meditate above the plate, you kind of get a brief vision of um, like you've been, it's as if mentally you've gone out of your body and so that you could see the three of you there. Um, and then you see yourself and then you see your vision start to float away and you, you see like a ghostly body of yourself float through the dungeon into the room with the big chasm and land on the platform on the other side of the chasm. And then the vision disappears. Well, it's obvious. We just need to learn how to fly. Kobe! You gotta Kobe <laughs> it, man. You gotta Kobe it. Or we could just leave. <clears throat> well, what did you see when you was there? Oh, um, I, I totally Kobe that pit, <laughs> and then uh, that's all I saw. Wait a minute, it's not a pressure plate. Oh, uh, maybe a, a Jedi has to be on the fo on the plate using the Force in order for the bridge to extend. When I was, um, when I stepped on the plate, <coughs> did I use the force, or I just let it on no, the plate? No, you, you just meditated, you didn't use the force. Maybe, maybe it's a teleporter. Is that a, is that a thing in Star Wars? No. Yes. Are there teleporters in Star Wars? Yes.
Is there some kind of pressure button maybe on the statue itself? Uh, no. Not that you can tell anyways. So once he landed there, what happened? Like the the whole thing just disappeared after that, or? Well, he, his vision disappeared. He returned to reality. It was very abrupt. Like he woke up from a dream, kind of thing. So, can I use the force on the plate? Uh, yeah. Which one? I don't know. Uh, <laughs> move object, maybe. No. Uh, which which plate? Which oh, guy? a fence plate, obviously. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, what do you want? Do you want to channel the force like you did with the? Well, I don't want to say because that's probably gonna do the same thing. I just wanna. Why don't you, you try? Why don't you channel it into this one? Because with these ones, you didn't have to be standing on the plate, did you? Say that again. What? Uh, with with these plates here, you didn't have to be standing on them to to use them, right? He was standing on them. Oh. Do you have to be, or could you do it from like across the room? Uh, you can try. Because I was thinking, why don't you try to activate this one down here? Um, but then wouldn't that be the same thing? Then I, but then I would go back. What do you mean you would go back? Go back to that one. Would you? Well, this one went there, so wouldn't it be logical that that one goes there? <laughs> None of this is logical. <laughs> logical to me. But how would how would we do it from all the way down here? Well, it might be possible to channel the force into it from across the room, right? Oh. I assume the distance is uh, six. Well, I know that. Uh, I know that John uh, tried to move it before. And he managed to make it shake, right? Shake, so... shake a little. Yeah, but that was just because my roll was so good. That's true. So what, I mean, I wouldn't know what else on it, uh, really. Other than to meditate, but... Well, you can meditate again, or you could channel again like you did with the prize statue. Yeah, I'll, I'll channel, fuck it. Okay. Um... You channel. I need to know where everyone is right now. <laughs> Shit. Uh, shall John I is, uh, John is home in the ship. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, <laughs> "Fuck you guys, I'm going home." What was I last? I channeled into what prizes? You were you? no, you were on Vance, so you were on his plate before. Now Mike walks onto the plate as well. Do you walk off the plate? Uh, yes. And Alice, you oh, okay. oh, hold on. Right there. Okay. Didn't just mention that at least two people can stand on this plane? Yeah, two people can stand on the plane. So what if it's some kind of a teleporter and we teleport to this plateau? If I channel. That would mean that Alice needs to stand on here too, because if I go there, Alice is stuck in this room. If that's gonna happen. I mean, I don't know if it's gonna happen, but... You know what? No, I stay on the plate. I stay on the plate with, uh, with my bro. If we go down, we go down together. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay, let's do it. Fuck it. Okay. Get that bros for life. I would assume we can we can go back, hopefully, to get Alice if that's the case. <laughs> so the two Jedi stand on the plate, and they I'm channel, gonna, yeah, I'm and channel. Bar channels his energy into the plate of do, that do I need Jedi I use Knight. Force? That. You don't need to make a roll. Oh, okay. Um, Here comes the second the, planet. The two of you <laughs> have an out-of-body experience where you see 
a ghostly figure of yourselves float up above. Uh, again. Um, and you can see yourselves standing on the plate, and you could also see Ellis standing off in the distance. Uh, and then there, everything kind of blurs into a whirlwind, and the next time, by the time you realize it, you open your eyes, everything's blurry, you're a little bit disoriented, you're a little nauseous, um, but you're standing on a completely different plate now. Uh, as your vision starts to return to you, it's much darker where you are. Um, you don't notice any statues nearby, but in front of you, you see a giant chasm. Nice. <sighs> so, we're here. Alright, open the door, man. So, what did, I, what did I see from my perspective? So, you saw... You saw the two Jedi Knights look like they begin to concentrate intensely in front of the uh, statue of Ant. And then you see their figures um, kind of start to dematerialize. They become awesome. like, um, they look like they become outlines with a lot of interference, like a white noise particle type thing. And then they just kind of break apart into a billion pieces. Okay. Interesting. From your database inside your head, you've never seen anything like that before. <laughs> so I tell Tomax, uh, I guess I'll have to go back and get Alice. Or not. I mean, well... <laughs> Whoa. Um, he broke up completely for me. Yeah, I have no open idea what he said. <laughs> oh, open the door. Open the door, well, Should we get Alice first? You, yeah, you guys are now dead to Alice. Um, so I'm just going to walk off and fight a new master. I, I, <laughs> what I tell John. I'm, I'm going to tell Tomax to, like, you go try to open the door. I'll go back and get Alice. And hopefully you get the door open when, we, when I'm back. All right, I'll walk up to the door. Yeah, I'm going to channel energy again. Okay. Um... So Bart begins to channel, and you have the same kind of whirlwindy, blurry, right, blurry experience. Stuff, right, yeah. And within a matter of moments, you find yourself back in front of the statue of Ant. This time, though, having done it twice in a short period of time, you find yourself very nauseous. And as soon as you land, you vomit all over the floor in front of the statue. Awesome. Ellis sees this this statue uh, this this thing materialize in front of him. He has no idea what it is. <laughs> well, he should see. He should recognize me, right? I mean, I said <laughs> I I'll tell Ellis to. Uh, there's a stand down. there's a good like three seconds where it's not registered as VAR yet. Okay. Well, what what are you gonna do? Um. Could stand down, or you can. Is Ellis fire. one of those droids that shoots without asking? I don't know. Yeah, I don't. I'm asking him right now. So, <laughs> I mean, on the one hand, I think Ellis probably wouldn't shoot until the whatever it was actually materialized. Um, and yeah, on the other hand, I think Ellis is a broken piece of hardware and may just shoot anyway. Uh, maybe you need to roll. Maybe I do. Let's do that. Let's make an Channel. intelligence check. Check. Okay. Um, <laughs> Ellis okay. Opens Somebody fire gonna die. <laughs> so what were my options again with a six? I thought six was still good. I thought it was five or below five that was uh No 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 six was I mean six I think was something that you could you oh, could damn. tell me to stand down, but you haven't finished materializing yet, so I mean I'm not sure if there's anything you could actually do. I think yeah. you have the fire. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So, but do I still have an option to deflect his lightsaber? No, light because race? you haven't fully materialized yet. Although, on the good side, you haven't fully materialized yet, so maybe it won't do anything to you. Maybe. I mean, I don't really care if you shoot me or not, but I just want to make shit look cool. Well, let's find out what happens anyway. Like, I mean, if if it's like a time thing, <laughs> if he shoots and I, st I am still 
materializing, I would assume. So maybe at like less seconds, I could still try to like this. Well, you can't really dodge because you're bending over the puke. Can That's you? true. Well, he, he's. This is before he bends over the puke. This is. Well, I'm just saying, like, even if he was going to try to dodge. Oh right, yeah. Right. So, um, Ellis raises his blaster rifle, immediately takes aim and fires. Um, Ellis sees the blaster rifle beam go directly through the materializing VAR. Um, a split second later, VAR fully materializes and Ellis now recognizes VAR, uh, leaning over and vomiting his guts out. He okay. looks, as far as Ellis can tell, unharmed. Do I feel harmed? <laughs> <laughs> You don't feel anything except intense nausea. <laughs> okay. Well, so I'm not even. I don't. Well, since I'm materializing, so I guess I did not even see this happen. You didn't. You have no idea what happened. You can it's smell lucky. the burnt of a blaster uh, rifle there. By that's fine. But I would assume also that he's not pointing his gun anymore. Uh, it's probably still pointed at you. Yeah. Okay. But I think as soon as it recognizes you, it would probably stand down. Oh, okay. That's cool. That's so nice of you. <laughs> it it did try to kill you. Um, I. Yeah, I just. Uh, <laughs> Although you don't know it, and uh, half puking. I'm I'm like. I'm not actually asking Alice to come over, but I'm like using my hand gesture to like, throw him over. Because I'm like half puking and shit. Know what I mean? Right, yeah. Um, so do you walk over? Well, yeah, I guess Ellis will walk over. Okay. You go over and... Um, Var has just about finished puking his guts out. He's recovered from the nausea. It only lasts Watch a few I'm going to have to do it again. <laughs> <laughs> don't, don't get puke on my, uh, on my, on my feet. I'll try not to. So... This could turn out bad, since you're a robot. <laughs> but I'm channeling the plateau again. Okay, so the two of you get on the platform and you channel right away? Yes. You channel right away and the two of you dematerialize and... Um, Within a matter of moments, you find yourself um, over on the other side of the platform where you were previously at facing the giant chasm. All right, um, I again? <laughs> I need a... Big check. No, I need... Hold on one second. I need a... Give me a dexterity. Dexterity? Uh, I can do that. From whom? Just Var or all of us? No, just Var. 14. Okay, um, you, the two of you were facing each other when you dematerialize. Now, when you rematerialize, um, Vars' nausea is so strong that he pukes immediately upon rematerializing. Fortunately, he's got Jedi reflexes, so instead of covering <laughs> Ellis with puke, he only covers the bottom part of Ellis with puke. Uh. You've got puke pants right now. Awesome. I apologize to you, Ellis. Okay, I just wanted to We're make sure Ellis anyway. didn't uh, nah, didn't sure. consider that a projectile weapon. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm actually gonna like sit down here, like just sit. Oh, can I do perception Still. on this door or whatever? Um, go ahead and roll. Uh, yeah. So while he's trying to open the door, I'm gonna get a cigarette. So grab it. All right. Okay, um, so you have basic perception on the door, but you do realize, you do see that the door is a simple door, there's no lock on it, as far as you can tell, there's a, a simple doorknob. Um, it sounds like, it looks like a um, poorly crafted, cheap wooden door that really has no function in terms of security. You could probably just either kick it open or just plain open it. 
All right. I'll be right back. Thanks. Okay. So, guess is what's behind this door. I'm thinking something evil. Possibly that uh, Sith or Dark Side presence he felt earlier. Well, he said it was far away away. I think we would have known if it was across the pit. It's, well, we don't know what's behind. Like this, there could be a massive uh, like corridor or something behind here. I don't know, but I'll assume it's something we have to fight, and we'll get into a fight. We'll go through this door. Yeah. Maybe I should. <clears throat> uh oh, is the music changing? Uh, I don't hear it changing. Nope, wait, there we go. What's okay, going on? Sister Soda. Huh. I think that's the first time I've noticed it. Uh, reset. Ah, yeah. yeah. Right, I'm back. What's up? I'm back. <laughs> we thought you were sneakily changing the music to combat music. <laughs> yeah, the music just cut out there, and we're like, what's going on? Wait, what? But it just restarted, so. Yeah. It was just loopy. Um, did you guys give me grenades or something last time? Um, I think that we got some boxes. Didn't we get some boxes? Yeah, um, we got some grenades from the uh, guy, and you gave all your grenades to yes. him, and I kept my grenades. And yes. they were all like, why don't you give your grenades to my droid? Yes. And I was like, no. Okay. I'll keep my grenades close yeah, to my grenades. You're a stupid, a stupid well, guy. What kind of grenades were they? Because I don't know if I'm written down here. Uh, frag they are. There are three frag grenades and three stun grenades. Uh, yes, correct. So I have three of each. Yes. Yes. Okay. I actually wrote that down. <laughs> so did I. Generic travel kit. Yeah, I had no idea what was going on during the discussion, so I was like, I'll just wait and see what to say afterwards. Um. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, is the door open? Did I miss something? Uh, what happened? No, uh, no we've not opened to... it yet. We're about to. No, we, what we know is that it's a very cheap wooden door. And okay. there's probably a fight beyond it. Okay, well, how about we just... Uh, am I, like, tilt yet? Yeah, I was going to wait for you to be standing up. <laughs> uh, <laughs> you're, you're back. You're fine now. You're, you vomited pretty much every food you ate right, in the okay. past 24 hours. Okay, so... <laughs> Uh, okay, I stand up. Let's uh, go to the door. I mean, okay. we're here now, so. Yeah. Is there a safe point nearby? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you can use a tent right now if you want. Uh, I would love to. Safe point before a door. <laughs> Always. Obvious sign man. of a boss. <laughs> Always. Okay, okay, let's go so to the door then. Open the door. Or at least listen, maybe first. If you hear something. Which one? Look. What? Which so one? Like, there's only one door. No, I mean, do you want to listen or just go through the door? Uh, go through the door. Go through the door, fuck it. Okay, Smell you check. open the door. Um, inside is a very narrow tunnel. Uh, uh, room for single file only. And on the sides of the wall um, are small uh, electric torches that have illuminated the path. It goes very, very far down in. You're not sure how, how far. Um, you can't see the end of it because somewhere about 30 feet in, uh, it's the uh, trail starts to twist and turn, so you lose line of sight. So it goes like in a snake form? You know yeah. What, what we could also do is just get rid of this uh, zoomed in map of the uh, the puzzle room from before. Yeah, you can... Because we don't need that map anymore. You can do whatever you want. Do you want me to delete it? Uh, zoomed in what? Yeah, just delete that. The red map. Oh, the red map? Yeah, we can't delete that anyway. Well, mo well some of it, I guess, but... Oh, yeah. Because that's this room here, I believe, so... That's correct. Oh. Right, but we saw light, right? Correct? Uh, there's lights hang. There are torches hanging oh, on torches, the walls. Oh, torches, right. But they're electric torches, not... Um, so see, we see cables and stuff. You see what? Cables? Running cables, along yes. The yes, yes, yes. Um, okay, I guess we'll just keep on walking. Okay, you walk. Uh, you which order are we walking? Walk. What's that? I'm saying which oh, order yeah, are we walking? What, what order do you want to walk? Oh, uh, well, I guess I open the door, so I guess I'm first, then I suppose. Or I'll give them a second. Okay. 
and, and the droid droids bring up the rear. <laughs> so the rear guard, the most important down. position. Do we still have our lightsabers out? I guess we do. It's up to you. I, I we're, we're we're pretty close proximity to each other, so maybe we should. Uh... <laughs> well, we're, we're yeah. not, not necessarily put them away, detox, but right? just. Uh... Yeah, it doesn't it doesn't take a lot of energy or. Right. Okay. Let's Effort to handle turn them on, but not turn yeah. them on yet. Okay. Okay, Although so those did provide light for. We still have the glow sticks anyway. The well, there are, there are torches on the wall, so we, well, oh, yeah, we yeah, don't need true. that. Yeah. yeah, I can't believe I forgot that like 20 seconds okay, after we mentioned. 20 seconds. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, so I remove my uh, fusion light, put that in my backpack or whatever I have with me. Okay. Uh, you walk hold down the, the path. Build of my lightsaber in my hand. Okay. And uh, the three of you walk single file down. Um, the sides and the ceiling of the wall are completely smooth, like that round uh, okay, yeah. mirror reflection-y type room. Um, it's, it's a very nicely carved out pathway. Um, the ground is completely free of dust. It seems to be very clean, and um, but as such, it's very slick, and every step you take makes a very noticeable sound that echoes all the way down the tunnel. What oh, kind like of sound? those bones thingy uh, that path that we uh, no like when you step before. on uh, a steep yeah. rock, yeah, it makes echoes. a shuffling sound. Right. Oh, okay. okay. There's not a specific rock or anything. Okay. No, not a specific type but of rock. We're, we're no. just gonna keep on rocking. <laughs> you just keep on walking down. It eventually opens up into a small rectangular room, about fifty feet in. There were no Ready. other entrances. It's it goes straight into a dead end. Yeah, I heard that as well. <laughs> uh, when you get into this dead end, this rectangular room, you discover what seems to be a huge study or library of some sort. It's wall-to-wall -wall bookshelves. Um, that uh, fill up to the ceiling, which is about uh, 20 feet high, all filled with books of various different ages. And in the center of the room, you see one large circular table, uh, reminiscent why are you of. there? Because that's why we uh, cleared the. Uh... Don't you see it on the left side? I drew, drew the green path on the left side already. No, oh, it doesn't well. matter. Well, it doesn't matter. Right, whatever. You see a large circular table um, with tons of papers scattered over it. Uh, Alright, let's look through the papers. Yeah, I guess so. You look through the papers and um, you see on the table there are a ton of documents written in an old, old archaic language that you do not recognize. Um, intelligence check or Galactic lore, or uh, what else do you guys? Can or... only do galactic lore once we train it, yeah. right? Yes. What no, languages just... do you guys know? Uh, I know basic and Eldor. I know okay. basic and Zebrak. Okay, and basic and binary. Okay, none of those are helpful. So just intelligence. Okay. Intelligence incoming. Okay, I can't read. I don't know Jack Squad. <laughs> <laughs> The two Jedi can't read for shit. <laughs> um, I'm not very smart, I'm just wise. Yeah, me neither. <laughs> me neither. The, um, the droid recognizes that the papers um, are in the language of Rakata. Oh. No, cheese. Aren't those the tiger oh. people from, uh, from Legend of the Five Rings? Uh, no, I thought it was like the rat people. Yeah, no, that's Nesmi. No, that's a, yeah, Nesmi. I had a sandwich with ricotta cheese. It was pretty good. <laughs> so, ricotta. Um, do you, any of you guys have any lores? No. I know. Okay, then but, give me an intelligence again. But I, I was just wondering, can Alice translate? Uh, not if oh, I don't know the language. Uh, no. I know all the things, so obviously. Uh, do I? Okay, I'll just roll as well since you oh, asked for it. I mean, I could Google I translate. <laughs> um, so 
Ellis tells the two Jedi that they are the papers are of the Rakata language. Um, from that, Tomax immediately is able to recall from his studies at the Jedi Academy that the Rakata were a humanoid species um, with amphibian features uh, in physique. They look like com- some kind of frog. Weird that like their eyes came out where you would expect yeah. their ears to be. They had like weird like cone shaped heads. Either way. Um, okay, so so the language is French. Yes, <laughs> and they smell like cheese. <laughs> The only thing that you can remember um, that's significant about them is that they were, in their time, masters of technology. They were the best architects, engineers, um, scientists uh, in the entire universe, and they have a history of um, building just terrifying weapons of mass destruction. Um, the thing is that most of their inventions, they were just concerned about building it, but and, and they didn't really. I mean, they would use their inventions, but mostly just for self survival. However, history has it that when people of the dark side obtained Rakata weapons, they would always typically use them for evil and cause great havoc until uh, a lot of resources were spent and a lot of lives were lost to stop such technology. Dude, I think you destroyed a planet. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, I think you might be right. But, uh, yeah. Um, Any other papers? We should like grab all as many of these papers as we can. And take yeah, away. probably, probably should grab a lot of papers. And whatever books are there? Books on the Rakata? The there are a there lot of books. So many on the books Rikata, there. Yeah. I mean, can can Alice do like a scan of? His, I don't know. The I can read a thousand probably, words a minute. Probably. Yeah, if you want to scan the um, if you want to scan the bookshelves, you can you can do an intelligent. Uh, give me a perception check, actually. Who I? Yeah, yeah. Um, my favorite skill. Holy crap! Wow. <laughs> That's probably the highest roll I've seen so far. <laughs> yeah, whole game, all sessions. So, um, in in the in the um, the how do I describe this? In, in one of the bookshelves in the far corners of the room, there seems to be, um, Ellis notices, a um, set of four books of a um, series, volumes one through four, that um, seem to stick out further uh, than the rest of the other books in the same shelf. You go to investigate the object and you find that there's actually some kind of small metallic um, electronic item hidden, poorly hidden, um, behind uh, that set of four books. You um, you retrieve the object, you bring it over to the um, round table where everyone else is, and when you place it on the table for everyone to see, it looks to be some kind of, in a gross description, it looks like a shuriken, some kind of like <laughs> star-shaped object, um, except it's not sharp. It's very blunt. All the angles are, are um, 90 degrees. It's, it looks fairly bulky. It's about the size of, um, let's see. Probably the size of uh, like a small uh, couch pillow or something. Okay. Um, so it's not that big, and it's not particularly heavy, but it looks very advanced. And uh, in the middle of the star-shaped object, it's it's uh, got some kind of um, glassy uh, orb type of structure that um, looks like. To be some kind of projector, projector of some sort. Okay, well we have three round orbs with us. Wait, we have three, right? 
Yeah. Uh, three. Yeah. You don't see any, um, well, as far as you can tell, any place to put those orbs. Uh, would this be too heavy to take with us? Um, no. Well, does it? Is there like a button to turn it on? Uh, there appears to be one button um, on the very side of one of the arms of the star. Okay. So it's possibly a giant weapon, like a beam weapon, or it's like a a projector, I guess. Your like analysis a, like a tells helping? you it is likely not a weapon. Okay. So it's a help me Obi-Wan Kenobi. You're my only hope. Possibly. And what do you think? Should we turn it on? Or should we just take it with us? Um, Let's do both. <laughs> yeah. Well, I, I, yeah, this is the last room. I'm willing to leave after this room, so... But this do is we what have we everything? For. Do we have everything? Do we have enough papers with us? Do we need to check more books? I mean, with a roll um, of 30, I would assume that we don't need any So of Alice books, went so. through all the books and... Right. And these were the four. Like, a good uh, chunk of them were about the Rakata, but in history and in culture, and that really did not have much interest to you. Um, the others were about various other civilizations um, that are standard books you can find in any um, history section of the library or Not bookstore. Nice. What about the four books? Were there anything special right. the four books with the, that he saw in That's the back? Good. Yeah. The four books uh, were um, about a planet called Lehan. Alright, I'm taking those books with us. <laughs> about the um the it, it's more it's like a like a documentary slash encyclopedia all about the, the planet of Lehan. taking those i'm taking those books yeah okay okay you want you can turn it on turn the thing on see what it is or we can take it i don't care yeah let's just try to turn it on uh, all right so you press the button, yeah. and the I machine begins the to whirl, <laughs> and there's, there's a loud some kind of like grinding noise, and then you hear the sounds of multiple fans, uh, like something's powering up, uh, and then all oh, of a sudden... That's how my desktop used to sound back in the day. <laughs> yeah, it sounds like a really old computer, and then all of a sudden in front of you a bright beam shows up, and you see this. Ooh, oh, a Star Trek. Sick. Ooh, nice. And you see, awesome. I've not seen this in about a decade. Yeah. You see, uh, some kind of it's the locations of some kind of star system. You're not familiar with the star system. <coughs> Wait, you, you said there's an orb. Are any Place, of the right? Are any the, of the orb planets, is at like the very bottom. Are any of the um, planets marked? Do they have names or anything? Or is it just a, a chart? It's just a chart. No names, no coordinates, or anything. No names, no coordinates. But right. someone with specialization in this would know. Yes. Like the coordinates and shit, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, uh, is the orb at the bottom uh, removable? Like, no. is it loose? No. Nah. Let's just take the whole thing, man. Right? Yeah. Alright. Turn so, the thing off. Let's. let's yeah. Go. Turn it off. How how okay. big is this thing? Uh, oh, it's, it's like the size of a pillow. Yeah. Okay. Right. Yeah. So backpack size. Yeah, it can fit in your backpack. Yeah. And it's not very heavy. Right. So right now we have three orbs, this little star thing. We have four books, four books a bunch <laughs> of papers. Yeah. My memory banks. And that's and about it, right? And yeah. about 20 hours of recorded footage. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay, I'd say we leave, finally. Alright, let's go. Let's, uh, let's see if we can fight something, because that's most likely going to happen. I All think right. we, I think we should strike the like the amount of time we spend in this room from the record though. <laughs> well, whatever. <laughs> they they're gonna see how stupid we are. So be it. I don't care. So once we get here, uh, I'm gonna tell uh -huh. so much to go first, and uh, so I go with Alice again. Okay. Right. So the two of you um, are pretty. 
versed in how to operate this uh, platform by now, and the two of you make it over back to the statue of Ant uh, with no difficulties. Um, Tomax, you're slightly nauseous um, when you get back over to the statue of Ant, but you can refrain yourself from vomiting. Here I go. Var, you <laughs> are still very nauseous. I've vomited for the fourth time. Um, I need a dex roll. Okay. Here we go, Alice. Are you ready? You'll have nothing to bring up. It'll just be like bile. Yeah. Maybe or, like, or, or even worse, like a dry That's heat. That's it. So <laughs> you vomit bile all over Tomax. Wait, Tomax? can I make a dick save? Uh, no. Because you're Why not Tomax? expecting it. I don't have Jedi reflexes. You that? saved Ellis. You spared Ellis from your vomit. Dude, you puked on my armor. <laughs> I'm sorry, bro. I mean. I've done this for like the fifth time now or something. <laughs> this shit is crazy. Let's just get out of here. Yeah, you can get some new clothes in the ship probably, I don't know. Uh, you're gonna have to wash my armor, man. Yeah, I'll do whatever. <laughs> so the two, the three of you make your way uh, back to the... Yeah, I guess we just walk this way. Yeah, you just walk away. Um, yeah, as far working. as you know, as you go down, um, everything looks the same, although you do notice that there are scattered pebbles and stuff on the ground which were not there before. You guess that they had fallen to the ground from that from earthquake. earthquake that yeah. you felt earlier. Uh, when you reach outside, the Korriban that um, you remember is different from when you first entered, and it now looks like this. Um. Oh, dude, you blew up the planet. <laughs> well, that's a good thing, right? <laughs> I, I guess. Don't worry, I won't tell anybody. So they'll all see it when we show them the recorded footage. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm not worried at all. It's a very different atmosphere from when you first enter the temple uh this is weird it everything it it looks like there was a battle outside but there are no signs of a battle it just oh. it's just that amount of destruction doesn't happen naturally has or organically it, has the boundary field yeah. changed like there was the a what? boundary of like um of uh, flora like plant life right. surrounding the right. place there was uh, that is still intact. Okay. Oh, so you can kill everybody on the planet. Okay, that's alright. I don't really don't think this. Uh, I shot here, to be fairly honest. I don't know. It's weird. But then again, it's a sit place, it's a creepy you know, temple. Weird shit happens. <laughs> yeah, whatever. Let's, let's get to the ship, man. Let's go. Yeah, so does anyone so, remember where we parked? <laughs> <laughs> the three of you guys walk back towards the ship. After about five minutes of walking, you get to a giant crater where your ship should have been. Oh, great. There's nothing there. <laughs> God damn it, where's the Ewok? He steal the ship. There uh. is a passed out Ewok <laughs> on the side of the rocks. <laughs> he looks like he's drooling on himself. Um, Alright, I want to try... Sup. <laughs> I want to try to reach out with the force to contact uh, a council member and let them know that we're stranded on the planet. Okay, you are in the Outer Rim territory, so it's very far away. There is no limit to the power of the force, man. Okay, you can give me a force, a uh, use the force. I also want to spend a uh, force point. Okay. Yeah. Oops. Don't don't they have FTL uh, communicators in this universe though? Um, do they? I don't know. Oh, I don't know. It's a D six. Well, I mean, D6. they have those holographic um, communication oh, things yeah. they use in the Jedi Council. I imagine those go through some kind of relay system, though. Not like a small portable would have the the like right. well, power I source. I think normally R two was the thing that did a lot of the recording for. Uh, for Obi Wan when or R four when whenever he had to communicate with the council. Yeah, but uh, he did that. that was through the ship, wasn't it? That was through the ship. Yeah. Oh yeah, it would have had to go through the ship, yeah. Yeah. Okay, so you used the force to call out to one of the Jedi Council members. 
Um, you hear a response uh, back almost immediately saying, Release me. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck, I said. Alright, I guess we gotta go. Uh... Is there Before any marks of, uh, like, uh, no, uh, maybe not marks, but do I see any debris of the ship? You like see no all? debris of the ship. Um, you estimate that given how clean the environment looks, that wherever the ship is, it's in one piece. We are 100% sure that we ran out the same door we came in, right? Um, Does the temple look the same? I mean, everything looks kind of different, so you'd probably have to walk around and figure it out. You're not really sure. It, as far as you can tell, you think it, you, you think the ship should be here. Can I do a perception check here to see if the temple entrance looked the same as what we came into? Well, okay. the, the corridor we took was the same, right? The, the corridor the was the I mean, same. something That's might have... Okay, I don't know shit. So we're at the spot where the ship could, should be. Yeah, well, I'm I mean, totally confused We, right we also now. found the Ewok, so this oh, is yeah, where the ship true. is. Alright, um... I want to do a perception check to see, uh... I see any signs that might help me dictate where the ship went. Okay. That's gonna be hard. <clears throat> um, so you kind of analyze the the floor and rock patterns in the area. You see definitely signs of scarring from um, engine uh, blaster fire. Um, it definitely looks like the ship took off. So. Would my uh, my comlink um, uh, hardware be rooted through the ship? If it was in range, yeah. Um, can I try to contact the ship? Yes. Okay, I would like to do that. Okay, you attempt to send your comlink Maybe and use the radar first. Call out to the ship. Um, you get no response. That could either mean the ship is actively not responding, or you're out of range. Or it's destroyed. Or it's destroyed. <clears throat> hmm. Try to do a radar scan. Uh, do I have a radar? I mean, I've got my sensors, but. Oh, that's what you used before, right? Um. When you be able to sensor it, check it if you see it on your radar or sensor, whatever. Oh, the word we use for people. Right, I mean, there would be someone in the ship, right? Well, that was a much smaller radius. Of doing. Yeah. Plus, when I said that, I was actually thinking of more like auditory senses, because I figured you'd be able to hear someone walking around in a, yeah, a cave. I don't. I think you can actually buy a radar, right? I don't think. You yeah, I think that's that. probably an item you can buy, and I, I know I didn't. Uh, right. Um. <laughs> So aside from the comm link, I have no way of detecting the ship. Possible? Uh, no. Um, maybe, I guess, um, if it left like some kind of um, uh, trail. I mean, I don't know how the ship is propelled, whether it's like ion propel propulsion or okay. if it leaves any kind of uh, trail as it flies. Oh yeah, that's, that's interesting. Give me a perception. Maybe you got some like infrared that shows like... Uh, yeah, maybe. I'm thinking something. Oh, my worst whatever. perception of the, of the game so far. Yeah, where's your 30 now, man? <laughs> um, I would say you can add a force point to it if you want. Oh, yeah, I'll do that. I always forget I have those because yeah. I'm a droid. Um, well, even as a Jedi, I keep forgetting it. <laughs> so, you don't detect um, any ion trail, or rather, you can see the ion trail of the ship leaving the at planet's atmosphere, but after about. 200 meters into the air you kind of lose track of it okay you think that um its acceleration was very fast and you estimate based on the um trail of, of ion matter that you can see that it likely jumped to hyperspeed uh, to light speed as soon as it left the planet's atmosphere okay uh now interesting you note a separate um ion energy spectrum particle path uh, about 50 kilometers no 25 kilometers south of your present location um okay 
Can I determine from like uh, the dispersion wh how long ago it was that the ship took off? Um, you estimate probably about an hour ago. Um, which was roughly when the earthquake happened, I guess? About the same time, yes. Okay. Um, okay, I mentioned the other ship, or the other ship trail, uh, to the, mm -hmm. to the Jedi. Um, and I don't know what the, those guys want to do about it. I, I guess we track it. Yeah, we got enough to do. Did it? No, we don't. Well, I guess we can move into the evil temple and, like, live there. <laughs> I guess. <laughs> well, he said release me. Who is the guy saying release me? I don't get it. Who cares? That second ship, it, it, must be the it also jumps one. to hyperspace, right? It must be the black hole one. Sorry, what was that? We release him? Uh, the second ship, it also jumped to hyperspace, right? Or d is it... No, the second ship was a one Landing. that landed on the planet. Okay, so I haven't seen uh, any indication that it has taken off again. No. Okay. So let's go towards... Do we release the guy that is in the black hole? Black hole? Who cares yeah, about uh, <laughs> that should be real. Do, do, we already you already released one thing and caused the sorrow of a million lives crying out and, and yeah. suddenly being silenced. Um, yeah, we need to work on finding a ship. That's, that's okay, what okay, whatever. Let's go follow the trail of the new ship. Yeah, better be X wing or something. <laughs> <laughs> I hope it's not an X-Wing, because then only... <laughs> There's only one seat, right? <laughs> yeah, well, I'll fly away. Fuck you, guys. <laughs> so, you walk uh, about 25 kilometers um, at a fairly fast pace uh, to, to find this the source of the second ship. We're losing uh, calories, guys. Awesome. It's good, it's good exercise. <laughs> um, you make your way there after a little bit of trekking, and... Um, you find an, a clearing that looks similar to the temple area that you came out of. So similar to this picture right now. And uh, it's, it's kind of a, it looks like a ruins of some sort of old temple. Um, there's no entrance to any other temple as far as you can tell that goes underground or anything like that. You see next to one of the of various pillars um, that kind of lined the front of this this temple like structure um, a very old looking very badly damaged ship it um, actually uh, galactic lore or intelligence intelligence it is <laughs> uh yeah how do you have a zero <laughs> because uh, i'm extremely stupid apparently yeah, so... he's got a minus one, and he rolled a, a one. <laughs> Bar, you think the ship is a rock? Hey! <laughs> hey, that's a rock, you guys. Did you see it? Alex? I'm pretty sure that's a ship. What? I don't see a ship. What are you talking about? It's clearly a Mandalorian Raider. You identify like the ship to be a Rakatan ship. Oh. But it's damaged, right? It's damaged. It looks like it had a crash landing. If only uh, Chewie is here. Do I sense someone in it? You don't sense anyone in it. And Ellis, you don't detect any life forms within the ship. Uh, I'll just okay. make my way over to the rock and I'm uh, gonna knock on it. <laughs> you knock on the rock and uh, it it's makes a rock. metallic clanging sound. <laughs> wow, you guys, this rock is metallic, dude. That's... <laughs> I've never seen that before. Amazing. Is there like a door? Do I door Wait, what are you talking about? There's no <laughs> doors and rocks. Don't, don't be crazy, man. We just came out of a temple that was built into the rock. I mean, that had a door. Yeah, but that was built. <laughs> this, this is just a rock. <laughs> so Tomax goes over to the side of the ship and opens the, the side panel to the the ship. Var's mind is blown oh. as this <laughs> no rock way. opens up. <laughs> oh yes I am. This is the sickest rock ever. 
I hope you keep that up for the rest of the session. You start to wonder if Ellis is a rock now. Maybe he's a golem. Maybe my uh, maybe I teleported too much today. Yeah. Starting to see little brain cells. Uh, Alright, I'm gonna go inside the ship. So you head inside the ship. Um, inside is fairly intact. Uh, there's a lot of um, journal logs. Well, okay, so I'm a, I'm actually a pilot, so... Well, in a way. Uh, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna just try to put some buttons and stuff, like a okay. pilot would do. Okay. Want um, a pilot to check for that? You've never flown a rock before, so you don't feel very confident. Oh, that's true. <laughs> <laughs> But you sit in the in the <laughs> cockpit and um, you try to turn on the ship. Um, you notice that it powers on briefly, but then shuts off just as quickly. And your history as in your experience as a pilot um, leads you to believe that there's engine malfunction. Um, you do a quick diagnostic check to the computers with whatever limited power that you right. have. And you are able to isolate that one of the engine fuel blocks is um, broken and it's leaking fluid um, at the rear of the ship. If you could find a way to replace it or isolate it so that it's not part of the ship anymore, uh, you could probably get the ship flying. According to the computer on the ship, everything else is intact. Okay, right, so. who's, who's, who's our first who knows how to repair stuff? That would be uh, that would be me. I have got a. I'm trained 30, and focused in mechanics, so. Yeah, thirty thousand points or something in mechanics. So. Yeah, plus twelve in mechanics. Uh, I'm gonna go to the back of the ship and take Alice with me. Okay. And we're gonna try to find this problem or this fuel cell thingy, I suppose. Okay. Um. So you go to the back of the ship and you, um rummage around and you're able to open one of the rear access panels into um, what looks like the engine of the ship. Here it, it gets a little bit um, more confusing for you as you can fly a ship but you're not right, well yeah. versed on the uh -huh. engineering parts of it. So I'm gonna ask Alice, uh, do you know what to do? No. Didn't <laughs> <laughs> no. you be rolling like repair or something? Yeah, no, I was Go just... away. Yeah, I was just trying you, to see... Are you 100% oh. sure? That that was my charm check. Um, but you do not know what to do. No, I probably like 100%. do. Let, let me roll mechanics. No, well, no, I, I, I guess you should do uh, intelligence again, but well, plus two when trying to diagnose problems. Okay. Um, at first glance, you're fairly certain you can fix this problem. Okay. So you know exactly what to do. I'm, um, I'm a pro at this. Yeah. And if you choose to fix the problem, you don't have to um, roll to do it because you're such an expert at it. However, your analysis uh, is that if you fix, if the way that you plan to fix this is such that you're going to isolate the damaged engine block from the rest of the existing engine that's still intact, uh, but the, the rest of the remaining part that is in, intact is in such a bad shape that you estimate there's only one good jump left in it. Okay. Um, I want to check the ship's... FPL jump, um, right? The what? What? I want, I want to check the ship's logs. You check the ship's logs and they go back and forth only actually between here and one other location. Uh, you don't recognize the coordinates of the location. What time period? Uh, over the course of about a year. It seems to jump back and forth between the two locations about once every three or four months. Does it um, look familiar like from the star map that we saw earlier? Um, possibly, yeah. If you if you open the star map now, um, you take it out and uh, you turn it on, you actually recognize that when you align the coordinates, 
it is exactly one of the planets in that system that is displayed by the star map. I wanna... Well, they're on the back of the ship, so when they're dead, I'll, I'll let them do that. Well, you have comms. You can, you can use comms. Too. Yeah, I'm we pretty sure we've all got comm links. Yeah, oh, we all have comm links. Like, hey, the logs say that the ship's been to one of the places marked on the star map we saw earlier. Or, that's in the box. Does it mention anything about a name? Is there a name on, um... There's no name. The There's no name on the log, no. We just know that this ship came from one of the planets that was on that star map. Or at least it's been to one of the planets. Though what logic would detect that the person who was in this ship crashed and stole our ship. Uh... Oh, does the log say... Call. Does does the log say that the last time it landed on a planet was like an hour ago? Uh, yes. And does it say how long this ship was on the planet when it landed? Previously, it's... is it like a certain time frame? Was it like, or is it like a quick run by, or what? Uh, on on Korriban, you mean? Yeah, like when it came to the planet, did it like come there for like a few minutes and leave, or did it come there, stay for a while and leave, or? Oh, the last time it was in Korriban. The last time it was in Korriban, um, it was here for about a week. Is this technically stealing? <laughs> Not if it's uh, abandoned. Besides, Jedi aren't afraid to steal or cheat, apparently, so okay. <laughs> For Jedi to do that. I'm not sure Qui Gon's a, you know, a very good example of the way a Jedi should behave. Qui Gon is a Jedi master. <laughs> He wasn't some rebel. Just highly respected. So, I guess we fix it, and then. Yep, you you fix it. Uh, you're able to go back up to the front right. cockpit. Right. And I tell Tom like that we have. We can only jump once. Got one right. jump. Let's get one back jump. to the. Let's get so, back to the uh, the course. I would say the same thing, but there's also the option of going to this new location. Though I still think Coruscant would probably be the better choice right now. Well, well we don't have a our, ship. Our mission, well, our mission wasn't to uh, no, go to a true. new location, it was coming here. We should just give them the information and they're probably going to send us to this new location. But whatever, well, we have a better ship then, at least. What What you could do is check to see if the um, the ship comms are working. And oh, then you can send good. a message back to, uh, well, to the council. Well, did mention that once we're done, we should come back at least that have used the voice com. Um, we only got one jump left, so we, don't, we really don't have a choice. Yeah, well, we, we do. We only, there's always a choice, but... <laughs> well, we only have one intelligent choice and one stupid right. choice. <laughs> yep. <laughs> now, I'm not saying that we have to do the intelligent choice. No, no, uh, but I totally agree of going to Coruscant right we're... now instead. I mean, <laughs> you know... Once we once we're back at course and they they're probably gonna give us a new qu uh, mission, and then we we have a better ship under our hands again. This one is just gonna be at the garage or whatever. Or he get get this one fixed. Yeah. Or I, even that. So I I, I kind of feel like it's a good idea to take the initiative here and go to this uh, new planet location yeah. on the star map. But I think then, I think wait I think hold this, on. Th I think that's dumb, but yeah. I do too because we don't actually if if we never find a ship there or ever anything, there's no way of coming back ever. Yeah. If we had a, a working ship that we knew we could like come here, check it out and then leave and go somewhere else, that's one thing. Then yeah, but, then it would have been a choice that I would make straight away. Yeah. But considering we have limited resources, we should uh Go back right. home. Can you get the settings? Yeah. Yeah, Carson. You're out. You're out voted. <laughs> droid. We're going to Coruscant. Okay. Yes, we are. So, um, 
var you hop in the in the right. pilot seat? Um, what we do pilot? Uh, pilot roll? No, you don't do pilot roll. You yeah. power on the ship, <laughs> and the uh, navigation system pops up, and its uh, last destination auto pops up on the um, screen on the navigation screen, and it says um, Lehan system. Wait, what does it say? Lehan, Lehan system. Lehan. Oh, okay, I heard about that before. Yes. The books. And, well, um, can I just type in different coordinates? You type in the coordinates of uh, Coruscant. Coruscant, yeah. And uh, it defaults back to Lehan. <laughs> oh, this ship sucks, dudes. <laughs> can we hack it? You can try to hack it. It's a droid up here. Droid. I need please. a uh, use the computer. It didn't work for for three PO. Okay. Well, I'm not three PO. <laughs> I am much worse than three PO. <laughs> <laughs> I came uh, up with intelligent shit. You'll you be pleased have... to know that I do have a uh, use computer trained. Yeah. Well, why don't you fucking roll it then? Because <laughs> no one told me to roll it. Uh, VAR <laughs> initiates autopilot to the Lehan system. The Ooh. ship is taking off. Nope. Uh, well, uh, somebody? Something? <laughs> Start pushing all the buttons. <laughs> it is starting to take off in the atmosphere. Please, droid, will you um, tell the computer to take us to Coruscant? Okay. Um, tell the computer? The, uh, How does uh, that work? Uh, droid, was, droid action? Yeah, no, I was just checking to see if it understood the order obviously and it did and now it tries to uh, hack the computer not hack it but try to get it to stop its last action oh no you need to hack it and make it go to Coruscant obviously he doesn't have to hack it he just has to talk, plug his little thing yeah I just have to talk, talk to, to it. it droid to droid so um, from one AI to another you're now about uh, 2000 kilometers in the air and you disable the previous action the ship turns off and you are now in free fall back into the planet. <laughs> free fall. Well, I'll try. I'll turn it on again and try to control the ship. You try to turn it on, but it, you're overridden. Okay, what we need now is like a it says uh, um, a klaxon invalid sound. access <laughs> from previous user. Invalid access from previous user. Well, you're logged in, uh, Mr. Ellis. So, so do, your thing. do I do I still have control of the computer? You still have control of the computer. Okay, I want to. Yeah, uh, I want to reactivate the engine so we start to hover. You react. I need to use the computer. Okay, you are able to successfully reactivate the engine. You hover with about two hundred and fifty uh, kilometers of spare. <laughs> It's not that close, but it was a, it was an uncomfortable sinking feeling for the two <laughs> Jedi, to say the least. Um, we are hovering above the temple um, that you recently uh, escaped from. Okay. Now I'll put it in the coordinates for Coruscant. What are you doing that, or are you telling Ellis to do that? Uh, I don't think I'm smart enough to put in coordinates. <laughs> <laughs> well, apparently neither is Var because he got a four on a check and then a zero on his intelligence before. So, um, okay, yeah, I, I'm. Ellis is going to try to put in the coordinates for Coruscant. Okay, you put in the coordinates for Coruscant and you get um, uh, a message back from the ship computer that says invalid destination. Override. You try to override it, and it still says invalid destination, and then it defaults to the Lehan system. Um. Okay. So I want to. I want to try to dig into the system and see why it's um, rejecting any other uh, coordinate. Why the navigation computer isn't responding. Okay. Um. You, you dig deep in into um, the software of the system and you find that it looks like it's 
hard coded to only go between two destinations, Korriban and the Lehan system. Hmm. Well, it looks like we've got a shuttle bus here. It looks to be that you go back to the logs and the various um, uh, fundamental um, coding of the software for this uh, ship that it served no other purpose than to go back and forth between these two locations. <coughs> Okay. Elle set, uh, tries to tell this to uh, uh, to Var and Tomax in somewhat broken basic. Go, maybe, away. <laughs> yeah. Uh, tell me what. Uh, that the ship can't go anywhere other than Leon. Ah, uh, the ship sucks. Well, here we go, guys. Leon it is. Hey. I'm, I'm telling Alice to give me control and we're like warping at speed. Warp? That, this is this is Star Wars. Jumping, I know. <laughs> Whatever. It's the same shit. Jump to light speed. Jump. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so you. Yeah, um, jumping into this. You gonna go? Yes. Wait, hold on. Before. Maybe. Before we jump, you can we try to. Uh, Can you bypass? Well, could you? Oh yeah, use the comms. I was about to say, is it possible Tom's to bypass to, to, to the main the com? I don't know if it's all the way up to. Well, he just tried to bypass it, didn't he? Yeah, it's hard coded, so I'm guessing that Alice would probably have to reprogram the entire like operating system. Yep. Um, right. Did you so guess correctly. <laughs> when you when you look at the communication systems, you also notice that it is, seems to be hardwired to connect between one satellite tower in the Korriban system and also one satellite tower in the Lehan system. Um, if you wish to communicate with any outside towers, you'd have to basically hard code that from scratch. Yeah, but so we and can't connect to a Coruscant tower. No, no. Oh, it, it depends on how good you are coding, I guess. Yes. Well, I'm a all. droid, but it would probably take a lot of time. That's the main thing. It's yes. not. It's not whether I can do it. It's whether we've got time to do it. Well, we wasted enough time. Uh, I don't know. If you want to do it, we can do it. If you don't want to do it, then we'll just go to Lehan. I just go to Lehan. Maybe we'll find the ship there. Yeah. Let's go Lehan. Dumping. Okay. So you allow the autopilot to take over in its yep. um, transit to the Lehan system. It leaves the atmosphere um, of the planet of Korriban. You say bye to the planet. Um, bye, planet. Bye, Korriban. You're a true planet, bro. Of <laughs> evil planets. Just before you leave, um, Var and Tomax, you hear one last. <laughs> <Please>. <laughs> Yeah, too late, dude. Ha ha ha, you're so trapped. And, um, Korriban disappears in, uh, in a blink as you guys jump to light speed. Um, you head over to the planet of uh, Lehan. Oh, I forgot to add a picture to it. Uh, okay. There's your on. chance. Yeah, how do I... New page, drag and drop. Yeah, let me do that. Very blue. Yeah. Blue? Yep. Oh, did you Google it or something? Of course. <laughs> <laughs> oh, y'all heard about the update for the uh, Night Steel Republic 2, right? Yes. Did they release on Steam? Yep. Got a new patch, and apparently they're trying to integrate uh, the restoration patch onto the workshop. It's pretty cool. Oh, nice. So you make your way over to the peaceful planet of Lehan. Uh, as soon as you get out of um, light speed, your computer is going crazy. There are alarms sounding everywhere, and um, it sounds like something is auto-targeting you. Um, and you get the prompt on your pilot computer screen that says, enter access code. <laughs> above you, above the planet of Lehan, you see this ginormous structure. You've never seen anything like it before. It is about the size of um, oh. uh, three um, 
executive class star destroyers. Wow. It is ginormous. It is, it, it's got some kind of beam thing going on. Um, you estimate that it's big enough, it probably has its own gravitational pull. Um, and it looks like it's, you're not really sure what that energy beam is, but it's very bright and it looks like either something is coming out of it or something is going into it. It's very scary. Um, and the entire time you um, continue to hear alarms beeping in, in loudly in all three of your ears and it, it keeps saying access code, access code, access code. Then, then you find an access code when you were in the computer. Plus, uh, I don't. I, I wasn't looking for access codes, so no. Well, now would be the time to. Uh... So you're you're ordering Ellis to look for access codes in the computer. Um. <laughs> yes. Okay. Yeah, go ahead. <laughs> okay, Ellis understands. Does Alice find the access codes? I guess I gotta roll use computer. Yeah, use computer. So um, you're able to find the access code. Um, the access code is G one A zero four two G one one. You enter that um, <laughs> in plain text, <laughs> yeah. and um, you. You're able to relay that to Bar and um, Comex. Okay, I enter the code. You enter the code, um, and just as you hit submit, um, your ship completely loses power, and you start to free fall into the atmosphere of the planet. Um, give me intelligence check for Ellis. Oh, best one so far. Okay, Alice, you one. determine that you have been hit by some kind of ship-specific EMP of some sorts, and the ship's um, navigation system has been remotely shut down somehow. Okay. You are now free-falling into the planet. Do the escape um, pods! <laughs> are there escape pods on the ship? There are no there? escape pods on the ship. It's too small to have one. Do we still have, uh, do we still have main computer <laughs> and engine access? Um, no, not from the computer, but you can manually access them. Uh, what do you mean manually? If you hardwire yourself directly into the engine. Oh god. <laughs> I'm gonna turn into the ship, guys. Yeah. Yeah, let's do it. You are about 5,000 kilometers in the air. Okay. Can he hardwire himself, or do, does someone need to do it? Um, I will. If you can do a mechanics to do it yourself. That shouldn't be a problem. Okay, I shall attempt to um, wire myself into the ship. What part of the ship do you want to wire yourself into? Um, Hopefully the engine, so you can <laughs> yeah. computer or engine. <laughs> well, can it, does the main computer still have um, access? It, it doesn't, does it? The main computer is completely disconnected from the engines right now. Yeah, right now it's completely disconnected. Okay, so engines. Okay. Glad I got a smart droid. <laughs> Holy cow, that's a nice roll. Um, in a matter of seconds, uh, which is very important for this crucial time period, you um, uh, easily connect yourself into the um, operating system of the engine. You're able to control its, uh, its functions. Uh, regardless of the main computer system. Okay, I attempt to fire the engines. You attempt to fire the engines. Retrograde. Um, it it powers on briefly, but then it powers back off again. It looks like whatever hit the ship um, did some damage to the engines. You do a brief diagnostic study, and it looks like it took some heavy damage. It's not something that you can repair while you're in free fall. Um, you are now at four thousand kilometers above the air, above the surface. Doesn't it have any like thrusters or anything? You can activate the thrusters, uh, 
given your previous experience, you estimate for probably brief bursts at a time, but nothing sustained. So we don't have strong. enough power to achieve orbit. We it don't have enough to stabilize. Strong enough. Would it be strong enough to land at least, like if we power it right at the right moment? How fast are we? How fast first? are we falling? You're falling. Um, you're you're falling probably at about thirty meters per second. No, 20, 20 meters per second. Do these ships have a suit? Like so, a parachute. So What's we, that? we only need 20 meters per second delta V. <laughs> yeah. Yes. So that, yeah, we can we can achieve that. Although we're going to speed up as we get closer. to You're the speeding up with the. You have. So you're not sure of the gravitational pull of this planet. Um. So I can cause us to stop falling now, but then we'll just start falling again as soon as the thrusters kick off, uh, fail. So. I, you I, I could I could buy us some time. Calculate it to. Well, you you estimate that it would be about a fifty-fifty chance if you went for if you saved your thrusters for like one big boost um, as you get closer to the ground. You estimate a fifty-fifty chance of survival. Okay. Or you could try to neutralize velocity now and see what happens in a free fall situation. Um. Or you could try something else. Can I use the force to hold the ship up? <laughs> <laughs> or, could I use move object to push down on the planet as we're falling? <laughs> <laughs> so, if you do a move object with a DC of 35, you can move a colossal sized object, uh, which will be your ship. 35, let's use force. Can I spend like 4 force points? <laughs> <laughs> No, well, we could use not. a destiny point to probably pull this off, but... <clears throat> um... Yeah, I'm just... I think we're gonna have to risk the, uh, thruster movement. Um... Well, okay, before... Well, or you, or you leave the ship, uh, the engine, and you try to... Well, I was just thinking. Get access uh, to the computer. Yeah, if I access the main computer, I might be able to find some other, um, some other like safety landing devices, parachutes or right, or so something like that. How long do you reckon we have before we hit it? You're now falling. You're at four thousand kilometers above. You rec You probably have uh, about two to three minutes. Okay. Okay. And the longer we take it, the harder it is to. Yeah. Neutralize hard, uh, hard. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Go for it. Okay. Right. Okay. What if we combine the force with the thrusters? <laughs> <laughs> you could give that a shot, yeah. This is slow our descent so we don't all die when we crash. Or you could. That's, that's an option. I mean, maybe if I do my best to. Um, uh, to equalize our our, our velocity, um, and then you guys use the force to try to uh, keep the ship from buckling as we impact. That might be enough to to save us, or it might be enough to save the ship. Uh, we might still die in the process because <laughs> we might still hit the planet at two hundred meters per second. Can I just do whatever. Uh, try to get into the ship's control or something. I don't know. Okay, can I be can I be wired into the engines and the main computer at the same time? Um, or do I have to disconnect from one to? Uh, you can disconnect, but since you've already accessed it, you can instantly reconnect okay. between the two. So what I want to do is try to uh, quickly switch to the, the main computer. Okay, I need a maintenance on that or mechanics on that. Yep. You are able plus to connect 12. <laughs> into the um, main computer mainframe system. Okay, I want to immediately start looking for um, um, for the emergency systems, emergency landing systems. 
The emergency landing system is the standard one for your um, size of ship. Uh, however, given that it's a Rakata ship, it's actually very sophisticated. It has um, a combination of um, these small portable boosters that were previously not visible when you were connected to the engine. Oh. Um, and they're, um, they apparently are some kind of portable carbon dioxide rockets that will provide reverse thruster support. Um, there are four of them, um, each on the four corners of the ship, and you estimate that they probably uh, would get you safely landed uh, to avoid destruction, but it won't be a clean landing. In combination with the thruster from the main engine, you probably you estimate that you would have a safe landing. Okay, but I can't access both at the same time. No. So I guess one of you guys is going to have to. Well, uh, I can do that, right? Yeah, he's a well, pilot. Yeah. yeah. You, so you could probably do the uh, the main computer, right? Uh, he could, yes. And I'll switch to the engines since I'm the only one who's able to control those. Right. Um, and I will use the force. To yeah, yeah, you could have a push. You're going to move a tree below to clear some space. Yeah. <laughs> oh, good. Could I use the force to uh, try to solidify the hull of the ship to, or cushion our landing? To or brace something? it. Yeah, you could use the force to try to cushion your landing to brace the ship. Oh, maybe you should put a shield around us or something. A shield? Force shield. I don't force think I shield. have force shield. Oh, that's not a skill, but I mean, we can make up things. Fuck it. <laughs> <laughs> you can force choke the shield. We just we just need to bubble in half. <laughs> okay. Well, yeah. I could I could I could. Push out with move objects all around the ship to try to cushion the forms. Alright. Well, I'm ready. Well, I'm gonna, um, I'm gonna switch back to the engines, hand over control of the main engine to uh, of the main computer, sorry, to uh, Var. Okay. And uh, I yell over to Alice whenever you're ready. This planet has an atmosphere, right? We don't know. Uh, we don't know. Uh, damn, I should check that before. Can no, I see the? Can I? If I look at the window, I should be able to see whether it has an atmosphere. Uh, you look outside. Um, you guess it does have an atmosphere. You see plant life on the ground. Okay. So once the aero braking kicks in, I want to activate the uh, the main engines or the revert the thrusters, um, and try to uh, slow our delta v. Okay. And at what point, um, Mike, are you going to activate the reverse emergency? Uh, whenever Alice tells me to. <laughs> I okay. hope I roll good on, on charisma then. <laughs> <laughs> what? Blow the ship up? Or it'll all be in binary. Um... Okay, so um, at about 2,500 kilometers above the planet's surface, um, you start to feel um, resistance in your flow. Uh, in your in your trajectory down to the ship, and you think you've entered the planet's atmosphere. So um, we're now slowing down. We're now slowing down. You all, um, actually, the two Jedi, give me a dexterity check. Nice. Okay. Um, there is a huge bump as you kind of skid along whatever the atmosphere is of the planet. Um, the two of you are momentarily mid-air, but with your Jedi reflexes, you land back down on the ship with no problem. Well, I'm sitting in the, in the thingy chair, right? I would assume I'm buckled up. Uh, <laughs> you didn't say you were. Yeah. And well, I am now. <laughs> you now Momentary weightlessness doesn't And you say, that was close. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I jump, I jump into a seat and buckle up also. Okay. But I'm also going to say, I'm having a bad feeling about this. <laughs> We're about to die. We're going to die! So, um... Did anyone remember to, like, bring the Ewok? Uh, yes, he's still back on Coravine. He's still on Coravine <laughs> drooling. Ah, <laughs> uh, he's fine. Maybe yeah, we'll we can go always get beat him, him up. <laughs> he's in a better shape than we are right now. I'll Probably. <laughs> okay, I... <laughs> okay. I activate the uh, the main thrusters and I try to speak to um, to Var, but it all comes out as like 
a jumbled mess binary. of binary. And I'm like, okay. what are you trying to say? And okay. I start panicking. So you activate the, the remaining thrusters left in the engine, and it slows down your descent quite considerably um, before the engine dies out. Um, well, I'm doing my thing. Right. Are you, but at this point, do you want to activate your emergency reverse thrusters? Uh, well, I would assume he's not talking for nothing, because he hardly talks. So I'm just gonna assume, even though I have no clue what he's saying, that he's okay. gonna he's telling me that I need to do my thing. You okay. would probably also be able to feel the uh, the difference in acceleration. Well, you're a, you're a pilot, so you should be able to like know how to land a ship. <laughs> yeah. Uh, if you if you if you, if you read my yeah, he's not actually story, he's not actually I a pilot before. <laughs> he just so, thinks he's well, a pilot. I'm a pilot. No, I am a pilot. <laughs> I did get my my license. I need After a time, but I need a, a pilot check. Pilot check. Uh, where's my pilot? At? There it is. What is your pilot? Really good. Very nice. Okay. That's not bad. Um, shortly after the last of the thrusters are activated by LS, um, VAR activates the four emergency reverse thrusters, and you you feel a big jolt um, of resistance now as you ease your descent into the planet's uh, atmosphere. Um, fortunately, the two of you uh, Jedi are buckled into the uh, seats of the ship, and um, Ellis is pretty secure in the back, connected to the engine. Um, and you guys slowly um, have a, a fairly mild descent uh, into um, the, the planet. The only thing is that, given that you're using the very last um, strength of, of the emergency system for your ship. You can't control it at all in terms of direction. Right. Uh, it's just kind of floating down. Um, it, I mean, it's a bumpy ride. I mean, like, don't get me wrong. It's it's not like a, a gentle uh, balloon or, or anything like that. But um, at least it's it's not an out of control free fall. Um, a minute goes by and it feels like an eternity. You look out the window and you see what uh, looks to be like a very green, lush planet. Something actually similar to Earth. Um, there, there's a lot of water, there are a lot of trees. Um, you don't notice any animals or anything like that. And um, a minute goes by and you find yourself um, landed in the middle uh, of a jungle. I hope you have, a, you have jungle sound effects. I don't have jungle sound effects. Oh, what a disappointment. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Did we, um... Could we see out the window? Was it going down? Did we see any, like, buildings or anything like that? Um, so you did as you're actually, as you're in your free fall descent, um, about, you estimate probably 20 kilometers north of your position, you saw an interesting building that seemed to be in a clearing by itself. And uh, this is what it looked like from overhead. Huh. Nice. You're not sure what it is. Uh, it seemed to be, as far as you can tell, the only building in the area. Alright. Those are the only building in the area. Oh, we've actually hit the ground now? Uh, you guys are now on the ground, yeah. Okay. You've landed. Uh, surprisingly, um, the ship is completely um, torn to shreds, but the three of you guys are not hurt at all. Nice job, guys. I high five, Ellis. <laughs> I knew all those hours of playing Carbal would help. <laughs> <laughs> so, as you trek your way um, through this forest, um, you can still see the giant, massive spaceship structure looming overhead. And um, you continue to see that whatever eerie orange beam going into the planet. You're not sure what to make of it. Um, the beam, 
I guess fortunately for you guys is very far away from where, from where you guys are. Uh, it's still unsettling though. You have no idea what it's doing. Um, and it looks like, I mean, it looks like a giant moon or something, but just That's it's no so moon. close to the planet. Yeah. <laughs> it's a space station. I was waiting for that. <laughs> <laughs> um, and it's and the three of you are just struck in awe by the size of it. Uh, so back to the jungle. Um, you make your way uh, through the jungle, and as you um, walk, you notice a couple of things about the atmosphere. And, uh, you notice that it's very similar to the composition of, of um, Earth. It's very easy to breathe. Uh, however, it feels very humid. The air is very thick. Um, oh, it's like Florida. It's kind of like <laughs> Florida, yeah. Um, after only two or three minutes of walking, you feel your guys, uh, the two Jedi's at least, covered in an unpleasant um, uh, layer of sweat that co that covers your entire body, and um, you also notice that there, um, most of the time when you when you're on a planet, you can kind of feel the the force flowing from all the life, uh, the living creatures in the area. You feel none of that here, um, and you can also most of the time you sense the force from, you know, the plant life and and just things of the planet. You feel none of that here. It it feels like a void. Uh, it's kind of uncomfortable. It's almost as if it were an empty planet. Um, you've never felt that before. Um, you've read about it or heard about it when some of the more veteran Jedi masters have said have talked about uh, their tales from um, previous trips, but this feeling for the first time is is a very weird uh, sensation. Um, as you continue to trek, it's, it takes about a full, a full day to get there. Actually no, it'll probably take you two, it'll take you about a day and a half to get there. Um, do you want to trek straight through to get there, or do you want to stop to rest for a night? No, we should rest. probably stop yeah, to rest a couple times. Sounds, sounds good idea. Okay. I don't know how it's long been. How long has been since I last uh, turned off? Quite some time, I think. Okay. So um, we will say that you you trek through the better part of the day, and it starts to get into the evening. You find a a safe spot in the, in the local jungle to um, uh, make camp, and it's a, a secure area. You're able to find good shelter. And um, would you like to make a fire? Uh, I guess. Okay. Do we have um, some widows and stuff to eat? Uh, you have rations with you in your pack. Your travel right. pack? Yeah, right, I so imagine I most of our stuff is that. on the ship, though. Yeah, but yeah. You, don't, you, don't have to, you don't have to cook rations, do we? No, you don't have to no. cook rations. If you wanted to catch something, which, although through your journey so far, you haven't seen any living creatures. Why? Well, I, I was about to ask tonight. It. What's that? Do we, do we need a fire to keep us warm? Or is it still warm? Uh, it's still very warm at night. So you okay, don't then, then we don't need a fire. We'll just use a uh, fusion lantern. Okay. So you use a fusion lantern. Um, you camp through the night, and um, all of you are able to get about a good eight hours rest. Except um, for me, I only need an hour. Well, you only need an hour. At this point, you get all your force points back, and you can heal up to full health if you're not already at full health. You continue on checking the next day, and um, you figure you will make uh, to the temple within shortly afternoon, actually, given if you start early in the morning. And um, as you clear one of the hills, um, As you just reach around noontime, you again see 
over the cusp of, of the, the apex of the hill, this is this mysterious figure. Now that you're able to see it from close up, it looks from the outside like an abandoned building. Uh, it's definitely very advanced and very sophisticated on the outside. There's a lot of, um, if you look closely at the walls of the building, uh, some type of art or language there you don't understand, you're not sure what it represents, but they definitely are trying to say something about, or at least as far as you can guess, something about what's inside. Um, it appears to be made of some kind of stone, um, but there's some sense that uh, for Ellis, you can detect some kind of electromagnetic energy coming from um, uh, the inside of the building. Okay. And it's you think it might have a relation to the giant uh, starship you see floating yeah, in the sky, but you're not really sure. So um, but, yeah. um, that orbital uh, station or whatever it is, um, mm -hmm. the beam that's coming from it, does it... Does it target this area, or is it coming from this area? No, it's it's targeting a completely different area, uh, which you c it's off uh, your line of sight, off of the horizon. Okay. You estimate it's pretty far away from you, but right. you can't tell exactly where it's the target. But it's nowhere near where you guys are. Okay. Also, um, you see that the outer uh, portions of the building have had plant life, kind of. Um, invading into it and so it looks like it's not very well maintained from the outside um, uh, but you know kind of just with your gut feeling that you really shouldn't judge any building just based on that alone um, you see uh, certain markings certain statues that kind of line the perimeter uh, of the building and I would like an intelligence or lore galactic lore from everyone. I know none of the things. <laughs> Tomax, you are you pretty think sure. A yeah, it's a rock. <laughs> Dude, um, look at a giant rock. <laughs> Alice, you um, are able to uh, f determine that the statues um, are from the Rakatan culture. And one presumes uh, also the uh, the writing that we saw before. Mm -hmm. um, from your memory, the writing on the side of the wall is similar to the writing on the papers that you found inside that uh, library type room in the dungeon. Okay. Do we know from history that a Rakata is extinct? Uh, they are not extinct. Okay. Oh, it's interesting. Now he's not actually Rakata. I don't believe. Who? Something completely different. The Who? one that says he's a trap. Oh, right. <laughs> no, no, he's Mon Admiral Akbar. Yeah. yeah. Um, in kind of parsing through and comparing uh, just uh, like brute force calculations of um, frequency of letters in different in comparing languages with the writings that you see on the paper and what you see on the side of this wall, you think that this place is called the Temple of the Ancients. Oh, okay. Aerith! Sorry, <laughs> Final Fantasy VII flashbacks. <laughs> okay, I think we should just go in. Okay. Um, at this point, um, I was thinking we stop here and wait for Kevin for next week, or do you want to go in? We can wait for Kevin. Yeah, uh, we're about two and a half hours in, so this is probably a good place to stop before we like find a new dungeon and all that kind of stuff, and it takes six yeah. hours. So I'm going to stop here. Okay. Um, well, in that case, thanks for watching, guys. This is it from uh, TKMR Gaming, playing... Uh, Star Wars, uh, join us next week where we'll hopefully get to explore the Temple of the Ancients. Catch you next time. <laughs>